is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Oh, look who we oh, have. That's a beautiful day. Look at our man, Jim from Minneapolis. We are taken by storm. Taken it by storm, baby. <laughs> I love that. That's a great saying, man. Hey, what's happening, brother? Good morning, gentlemen. How you guys doing today? Good, man. Yourself? Oh, man. It's been the most incredible couple of days since when I called in on Friday. Litecoin busted out of that consolidation on the two-hour chart. Okay. And it just never looked back. It did a 100-point ABC up, and now it's very extended the way I look at it. But yeah. holy tomo I mean, it went up to $420 last night. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Make it a great night, folks. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Create the perfect relationship between you and your body. Treat your body with all love, honor, gratitude, and respect. When you make it a goal to do it yourself, you adore your own body and accept yourself completely. You learn you have the perfect relationship with anyone else you are with. My God, guys, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials flat, NASDAQ down 44, S&P's off six, gold up $2.40 trading at $14.90 an ounce. We get silver down six cents trading at $17.53 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 85 cents, $54.16 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds, a 10 year note right now up six ticks. 129.26, 30-year up 20 at 160.02. And both notes and bonds, folks, last two days, anemic volume. They both, both days they got to a lower low, have rejected that low. They're going into their spike low. And I suspect these things are going to take off like a rocket ship going up to their highs. It's very unusual when you see the 10-year folks two days in a row doing less than 1 million contracts. And that's what we have. Dollar, dollar index up to 244, traded at 97,572. The euro is at 111. The yen is trading at 108 and a half, and the pound is at 128 to one U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Well, what you have out here, let's go. I'm going to go look at the futures first, because what you had out here is that the... The futures were trying to test out their highs from this morning, and right from the get-go, they had a hard time doing that. Yeah, so at, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, 10, 10 minutes of 10 last night, you had, you had hit 301.414, and we got up to this 303.14, and then guess what? Just couldn't handle it. Uh, you, you broke the swing. We just broke the swing 20 minutes ago. Uh, the swing we're talking about is, uh, is at the 3,000 mark. We're, we're still trading 3,000. The, the setup here, okay, you get two different setups. The first setup will get you down to uh, 29.94. And we hit, we just hit 29.97. I suspect before we're over, we're going to be 29.94. Now, if we get some volume at 29.94, that's going to put game on of going all the way back to last Friday, which is the 20. 9.85. So it's going to be kind of intriguing. The NQs, they, they did test the highs this morning and uh, bottom line they were showing right off the bat that they couldn't hold price so the so the the high from last night was at whoops, wrong one nq nq z9 oh excuse me folks nq z9 so the the nqs there we go okay There we go. So the high from last night on the NQs had been 79.79. It spiked that high at 20 minutes to 10 this morning. And right off the bat, guess what? Couldn't handle it. Uh, that was a huge heads up because the bottom line is that the NDX 100 can bring things higher very quickly and bring things lower very quickly. And that's exactly how this uh, baby played out inside the marketplace. So we you know we went from that price point of 79.88, uh, 
and we've just given up 90 points. We're down 45 right now. You can see that this is going after the lows that were generated at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. Uh, bottom line is that was game down here. Let's see. Well, we almost hit it. We hit 78.92. 78.75 is game. Um, yeah, that's definitely game. The notes and bonds we're talking about, uh, this, is, this is pretty wild. So, you know, what we have out here inside the note and bond market is that the 10-year note right now has done 922,000 contracts. That, baby, you know, yesterday you got to a low, a low. We did 927,000 contracts. You're coming into the downdraft from the 13th of September where we had 2.4 million. It keeps rejecting lower price. This is, this is telling me, man, this thing wants to go high in a heartbeat. So we'll see how this baby's going to shake out. But uh, the 30-year is the same setup. And the 30-year looks like it's going to be the first one that you're going to get a total rejection of. And a total rejection would be a close of 160.07. And the 160.07 is coming into the same time frame. Uh, the 30-year has done 204,000 contracts. Bottom line, you're coming into... Uh, 552,000 contracts. It's a monster number, folks. It's just a huge number. Oil. Let's go take a look at the oil market out here. What we have with the oil market right now, oil is trading up 58 cents, 85 cents actually. We're at $54.16. We'll get those API numbers out at 4.30 this afternoon. Um, you get sideways movement. It's laying near the bottom. Uh, you get light volume out here, real light volume actually, uh, 23,000 contracts. And let me just make sure a CLX that this is the active contract. I believe it's still the active contract. It is. That's still the active contract. So oil has nowhere to go but to downtown, folks. That's how that baby is shaking out. Some of the higher volume equities, and I, in fact, see, if you look inside the NDX, this is going to be really interesting because even though the NDX is the weakest indice here, you're going to see uh, just how this thing is set up, and it's pretty intense, actually. So Biogen, folks, is up 28%. That's up $63. You got Pace Car up 3.8%. Uh, Vertex Pharmaceuticals is up 3 And you get uh, Kraft Heinz up 2.7. That being said, the equities that are down inside the NDX, okay, are overwhelming them in a huge way. You get Hasbro down 16.5%. Liberty's down 6%. You got Cadence Design down 5%. Now, if I put and I take all the NASDAQ stocks up, and we take a look at where they're shaking out, you're going to see that, uh, yeah, so the, the ones that are down, you get Intuitive Surgical, uh, that's down 25. You got CMG down 25. Hasbro's down 19. Amazon's down 19. Travels is down 11. MasterCard's down 11. You get some monster numbers out here uh, on the way down, folks, okay? That is taking that baby south. If we take a look at this on the daily as well as the, well, you don't have to need the weekly right now. What you're going to see inside the daily is that, and this is hard to do, you basically got over the highs of the last two days. It couldn't get to the high of last Thursday, and you're giving it up in spades. So what you're going to have here is this. You're going to have an equity market that tried to get up to its high, couldn't handle price, sold off, light of volume. What does that set up? That sets up lower prices coming at us. And we have... We know we have, between NASDAQ and the Dow, and the S&P rather, a slew of earnings coming out the next couple days. So these earnings are going to push this market all over the place. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! 
If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is uh, up 12. Nasdaq's down 47. S&Ps are off 6.5. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 11 to 12, <coughs> Eastern 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, the way you get the opening call, folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go right into the newsletters. You're going to see the opening call right there. You just hit the opening call. Right there, you can you can hit subscribe. Uh, you can get the opening call for one month, six months, a year. One month is one hundred and twenty-eight dollars. Six months is five ninety-five, which is a savings of one hundred and seventy-three dollars at twenty-two percent. A year is nine hundred ninety-five dollars, which is a savings of five hundred and forty-one dollars, folks, or thirty-five percent. Now they all come with a thirty-day money-back guarantee, so you have everything to win, nothing to lose. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you doing over there? I'm doing good. Yourself? Good, thank you. Very interesting market. Yeah, we are looking at 26,844 in the Dow. And, I mean, we've been here for the past uh, week or so. I, I it's going to be Tommy, very interesting. No, totally. I told my son Tommy earlier, folks, okay, we're up, you know, we, we got two floors here. I said, I am so sick of this sideways market, man. That something's <laughs> got to fly. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, this is really interesting that you say that because on the surface, it looks like nothing's happening. But just let me briefly go through this because we're always looking at the Chapman Wave methodology. I'll just grab this because it always clarifies what I'm looking for. We try to identify the lowest low bar, and then we count each successively higher peak at that fourth highest peak, and I alphabetize them on the way up A, B, C, D. It can go higher, but D, the fourth highest peak, is where other things can happen. And we're always looking for just three patterns, straight down or straight up, that's one. Arch formation, that's two. And cup formation, that's three. Then you can get the combination where you come straight down. You have the arch, it looks like a lowercase h. If you take out that left side low, you can go lower. And the y, the, inver the reverse y, is if you take out the high, you can go higher. So that's really quite simple to the core of the Chapman Wave methodology. So here we are, Dow goes to a peak D at 27,306 on the 12th of uh, September, comes tumbling down to 25,743. Then it rallies. 
And if it wasn't for IBM last Thursday, we would have got that leg D. We missed it by eight points. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying there's still residual strength. The MAG D was still quite good. And stochastic was actually way up at about 86, 87%. So I said there's some kind of strength here. But you had just mentioned, so in a way, if you're, just, if you're looking at indexes, if you're looking at certain aspects, it looks like nothing ha has happened. But why? Look at this. This is the, these are Dow stocks. Boeing, look at this tumble from 391 down to 324. I mean, let's face it, that's a big move. You just mentioned MA, MA and that's um, MasterCard. It's one of the top stocks in the, in the Dow for who knows how long. It's just been going for years, higher and higher and higher. It gets to a high on the, uh, this is right here, on the 9th of September. It goes to a leg D. That candle makes the all-time high and then reverses sharply down. And it tumbles from 293 down to, right now it's at 262. These are big moves. Uh, you've got McDonald's. You know, so I can go on. I just wanted to show sure. you that uh, it's the averages. It's the aggregate that really is confusing people because they can hear all the bad news and then they can hear all the good news and then all of a sudden you get something that's up huge Procter and Gamble all of a sudden today is up 3.35 up 2.8 percent and it's almost at the all-time high so the issue that I've said for subscribers to my opening call is we, we start to raise cash but we're also looking at certain stocks, certain sectors that are really very interesting and some are very good. You know, I've spoken about the XLF that I, I thought that the financials had probably, I'm talking about the banks, I'm talking about MasterCard, which is in the financials, or Berkshire Hathaway, I'm really talking about the banks. I think that the banks have done everything that they needed to do, um, that the Fed needed for security just to get, you know, after the debacle of the uh, 2008 crisis. I think they've really got themselves together so that the earnings are a little bit better, a little bit more consistent, a little bit more away from the market. That'll improve, I think, even more if the, if the, if the stock market can get stronger over the coming months. But at this particular point, the XLF has done well. and We have a bank stock, Bank of America, which has really done very nicely. Um, and I think the way I'm looking at it is just purely technically, you can see that in the weekly chart of Bank of America at the 31.17 high of May, um, that pull back at peak D, it pulls back sharply to 27.12, rallies, just misses that previous high by 10, 10 cents, pulls back, breaks the 27.12 uh, low by less than a dollar, screams back up again, and now it's gone to a recovery high. And now look what's happened. The monthly chart, you've broken key resistance levels. So I think one at a time, if you're looking at certain aspects, some good things are happening. If you look at United Technologies, we were long for a while. We took profits, haven't got back in. It did make a peak D, pulls back. And all of a sudden today, you know, UTX trading up 3.35 at 101.72, getting closer and closer to the all-time high of 144, which is hit twice in September of 2018. It goes to 144.15, plunges to 100. That's 44% decline. Screens back in five or six months and gets back to 144.40. It, it takes out the previous high by pennies and then pulls back sharply. And now it's trying to test that. So these patterns seem to be quite consistent. You see this beautiful, I talked to, I spoke about the cup formation. Look at this cup formation here. So I'm trying to be very selective for uh, subscribers. We've got some, I'm also trying to get much lower price stocks that are kind of under the radar right now because I think percentage-wise, they have a good, better chance of moving higher. They don't have to go that much higher, but just to give a nice percentage gain, that's the way I'm looking at it. So choppiness, and then all of a sudden, because the Dow did not make its peak D, you've got uh, a leg E in the, in the S&P. You've got a leg E in the Qs. They did their Ds, and then they, they, they pushed higher. But the Qs haven't, the index 100 hasn't taken out the high of uh, just a few days ago, and that was at four, uh, sorry, 194.50, and it's trading at 192.31 right now. Yeah, so that, this that's is a, gonna, this, it's going to be interesting what you're talking about with the NASDAQ, too, because that's going to be up to, you know, Microsoft and Amazon the next couple of days. And we'll correct. see. They're selling off Microsoft today, but, you know, that has the, so, that has the power to take the Dow as well as the NASDAQ up there. Cor no doubt. Correct. And look, look at this rect. I love to talk about rectangle formations because they can last a lot longer than your patients. And uh, Microsoft has been the, one of the, the leaders, one of the, one of the, 
one of the crash stocks of the 2000 era comes back, re reinvents itself. Oh, yeah. Spectacular move announced in this rectangle high level consolidation uh, between 141 and uh, 133. So well, you're right. It's going to be very important what happens next. But I think it's a rotational market. I think we're actually rotating on the upside and we're rotating some stocks on the downside. And even as I say in the Dow, I didn't even realize that MasterCard was down so sharply. And yet the Dow is up 31. I think I'm kind of impressed with the way the Dow is actually holding. That doesn't mean to say I have to break to new highs. I'm just saying it's holding well under these conditions. It should normally it's expect to see it down. 130, 150 points at this stage with these major stocks down. So it's a mixed market. I think I'm for subscribers, we're trying to play it as a mixed market. We've got some picks that, you know, remember I spoke about the grains. So we have a, an, an ETN on the grains. It's holding very nicely. And some of the grains have acted very well. Folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go right in the newsletters. You can see the opening call by man Basil Chapman. Just hit subscribe. Basil, you have a great night, safe night. And of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Think or Swim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's up 36, Nasdaq's down uh, 41. S&Ps are up uh, three and a half. Let's go over and take a look at Facebook. So you, you had Facebook uh, out here today today. Uh, Talking uh, with Congress, and the bottom line is that uh, Zuckerberg was up there trying to defend the Libra product. Uh, bottom line is that the market's saying, hey, good luck, Mark, but the uh, bottom line was selling you down six bucks. And what, what Facebook has, so 
when you look back, Facebook had a high of 208 uh, about two and a half months ago. It also has a high volume low, though, at 160. So let's see what they said out here today in prepared marks uh, for... Oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, this is... Uh, oh, I see the prepared marks already come out. This is funny. Okay, so in the prepared marks uh, for Wednesday's hearing... Yes, today's only Tuesday. Uh, he argued that um, the company is seeking to offer affordable solutions methods of sending money abroad. People pay far too high a cost. They have to wait too long to send money home to their families, wrote Zuckerberg. The current system is failing them. The um, House uh, Financial Services Committee uh, is focused on Facebook's impact on the financial service and housing sector, so Libra will be a major focus. Uh, but there will be likely to be other questions about privacy, election ads, and Facebook's targeted advertising. Uh, Libra's never going to get off the ground, folks. It's not even close. Um, <laughs> the bottom line is that you're going against every central bank in the world. Like, uh, guess what? They pulled it off years ago. They are the money centers of the world, and uh, <laughs> that has to be taken. That's not basically given up, and it will never be given up because that's all the power in the world. That's the real bottom line. So... Great idea, no doubt about that, but uh, bottom line is that it's not going to happen. Some of the higher volume equities, that, well, actually, let's go look at Hasbro. So I'm not sure, uh, Hasbro must have come out with numbers. Hasbro's getting smoked out here. Down $19, or basically 19%. Um, let's see what they had to say. So, G.I. Joe must have been going, let's see. Oh, that would make sense, yeah. Tariffs, tariffs are a fortune, man. Okay, Hasbro tanked, uh, thanked the Trump administration uh, in August for delaying new tariffs by Chinese imports until December 15th. It may be celebrating too soon. The toy maker tumbled 18% uh, Tuesday after reporting weaker than expected third quarter profit, a disappointing result that largely blamed on tariffs that aren't even in place yet. That doesn't make any sense. The, the challenging quarter for Hasbro is the latest example of U.S. companies warning about President uh, Trump's uh, trade spat with China, the threat and implementation of tariffs negatively impacted our quarterly results. Importantly, during the third quarter alone, we saw multiple different dates for the enactment. The shifting nature of when duties on toys would be implemented, they were initially set for September, but now are slated uh, less for less than now slated for less than two weeks before Christmas. Significantly disrupted orders and the company supply chain. For example, U.S. retailers that had placed large direct shipments from China canceled them in July and August and asked for domestic shipments from Hasbro instead. Some of those requests were fulfilled, but the toy maker said it wasn't able to rewrite all the orders. And this is hard to really wrap your head around a bit. So there's no doubt, folks, that, that you know, if you have, the TAFs are a huge problem. I mean, Trump keeps saying that, yeah, he loves them, and the bottom line is he's collected all this money. Well, he's collecting all this money from you and I. Okay, that's the bottom line. They're, they're monster taxes. What they seem to be saying in here is that uh, their direct suppliers, evidently, you must be, if you're a direct supplier or customer of Hasbro, you probably can order direct. Um, maybe they were ordering direct and they gave it up, um, you know. And inside of this also, it says that they're identifying and building products, including Vietnam, India, and others. Yeah, there's no doubt what... What has been happening, uh, and has been happening quite some time, too, by the way, is that a lot of companies in China, they're, they're operating smaller companies in Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, and, you know, then they're shipping out of those areas. The real question is you don't know uh, if they're being made in Vietnam or being made in China and then going over to basically get around the tariffs. Because the tariffs are monster money, you know. Figure just twenty six percent across the board. Every hundred thousand, you're paying twenty six thousand. It's 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 a it's a it's a huge number. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. So let's go back back to Hasbro. Let me see where this thing can go. So it drops out of bed. Oh, is that all time highs? Not the end of the world. So you're at all time high four months ago. One twenty six. It's a consolidation. These are monster consolidations, though. That's what's going on. So the bottom of this consolidation is at 76 bucks. Top of that consolidation, I'm just 116. It went higher than that. It went to 126, but that was a spike high. Oh, 126. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's an, what's that, 20? It's a $50 consolidation. 
for $126 stock. That is a monster consolidation, folks, no doubt. Some of the other higher volume equities out here, and this is going to be another low volume day out here inside the marketplace, folks. You get Bank of America up 20 cents. Snap is down 52 cents. Uh, Ford is uh, flat. You get Bristol Myers up a buck and a half. Biogen's the big one. Uh, that's up $62. We'll look, we'll look at that for a second. That's going to be their, uh, I believe that's their Alzheimer's drug is back on. That They had pulled the testing last March, and then they did a bigger uh, sample testing, and they feel that uh, they got some action out of it. Lyft is up $2.50 this end that they're going to be uh, profitable uh, a year before they thought they were going to be. I'm not quite sure that's going to be great or not, uh, how many years that's away, but we'll find out. Merck. Merck is down at $3. Let's go over to Lyft first, L-Y-F-T, and we'll take a look and see what they have to say. Right now, they're saying, let's see, no, it's in fourth quarter 2021. Uh, Lyft CEO uh, Logan Green says the company is going to be profitable in fourth quarter 2021. A year before analysts estimated. So, 20. I, you know what I can't figure out? I mean, when you look at something like that, right? Do you really think you know where you're at nine quarters from now? I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> you know, um, the market's reacting, though. That's, that's, that's got price and volume with it. We just went from 40 to $45. Now, I think Lyft went public, I think it's 75 we were looking at this this morning. Yeah, 72. When public at 72, traded at 85 for a split second on, and then basically gave it up in spades. Biogen. Biogen uh, got quite a lift up here today. Uh, it's up $62, 285. Uh, this just took back everything that it had given up in March. If we put this up, what you're going to see is just about. So on March, the week of March 20th, Stock was trading 3, 320, and it opened the next week at 224. Uh, we hit 318 today. That's pretty amazing. So that, yeah, that's, that's a number, man. Holy cow. And if we bring this back a little bit further, and you're gonna see that, uh, you know, it's, it's repaired a lot of the damage. I mean, you get, you get a big day like this, in a big week like this, that's what it, that's what it needed to repair this damage. Now, I suspect we're going to go sideways again, again, once again. And what the news was on it is that they are going to revive their plans on this uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, drug. That's what's going on. The decision was based on a new analysis of a larger data set from phase three studies that were discontinued in March. And uh, in March, of course, uh, that's where the thing went south, and it looked like it was over. Well, guess what? It's not over till it's over, and they decided it's not over. Come right back, folks. Stay right there. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss 
out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow up 26. NASDAQ down 42. S&Ps up 5.5. And you just had, you know, when we talk about uh, Esper, Mark Esper, the defense secretary, he just rescued himself from the cloud decision for the Pentagon. This, is, this has been going on a long time, man. This is the three monsters that are fighting it out, folks. you got Amazon, Microsoft, and Oracle have been fighting it out to get this contract for quite some time. And so it looks like it doesn't say what company Mark Esper's son works for, but he works for one of these companies. Uh, bottom line is that when you take a look at the the cloud uh, software, we, we were looking at this this morning, actually. And what do you see inside, uh, well, let's just look at this. So inside Amazon, that is, uh, they're growing at 48%. Okay, so let me see if Microsoft breaks it out. So that's Amazon cloud. And if this Pentagon one's going to be a monster contract, no doubt. It will allow them to grow even more. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, so Microsoft is growing by 16% inside the cloud. And Oracle, I think it's still down really to, I think Oracle's out now, but let's just say that they're not out because I'm not quite sure about that. And Oracle, okay, they don't break theirs out. They don't break theirs out. But, um, you know, those are the three monsters, no doubt, that uh, are going at it. And we'll see where that uh, whole thing's going to shake out. But uh, I suspect that must be getting close if, in fact, uh, he just turned around and uh, basically you know, rescued himself. Now it's going to be the assistant uh, secretary of defense that does it. Uh, Malvaney, folks, we can, start the, we can start trading on this. We'll see whether he's got 24 hours or 48 hours because they're just floating this out here again. They're floating a bunch of names out. It seems like they put Chris Christie out every, every single time. Chris Christie is not going to be inside there, folks, when he basically put Kushner's father in jail. It's not going to happen. Uh, but anyway, they're floating his name back out there again. They're floating Kelly Conway out there. Uh, Mnuchin, Mnuchin's not going to happen. Uh, you know, the reason, the reason, if you can separate, you can separate Mnuchin real quickly, right? Because of the markets. That, that's, that's my take on it anyway, okay? Uh, there's no way that he's going to basically take Mnuchin out when uh, you're talking about Treasury Secretary and you're talking about all the markets in general because the markets would not like to see um, Mnuchin go, you know, particularly go from that into some of us because the markets know what they have with Mnuchin right now. And he's always been in the finance business. That's the real bottom line. So we'll see where that shakes out. But uh, my bet, my bet is 48 hours that uh, we're going to have a new, um, what is it, chief of staff, acting chief of staff. 877-927-6648. Yeah. Let's go take a look at those NQs because that's what they're selling. Now, what's going to be so interesting with these NQs that they're selling them is that we have Microsoft and Amazon, and Microsoft and Amazon are monsters, man. You know, if they have any traction whatsoever, they can really get it up there. Now, you know, I'm bearish, okay? So I, my, my take is that, you know, 
it's not going to happen. But guess what? Um, you know, Microsoft has been the strongest equity, not only just in the NDX and the NASDAQ composite, period, in, inside the marketplace. Uh, out here today, what we have, as we're speaking right now, this thing wants to sell off, man. Uh, we're down 58 bucks. I believe we're going to do an ABC structure on the way down. And let me just look at this. We might get a confirmed one coming in. We get 15 minutes, and that's long enough to do the C to D point in it. Let me see this here. So you got, what time is it? Um, okay, so you get, you just broke the B point. So this would be a small ABC down. You got 79.35, 78.92. So we got, 42 points, which would get you down to approximately 78.60, or at 78.87. Yeah, I can make that there in a heartbeat, man. 78.60, where's 78.60? Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, you get the lows from uh, last Thursday, no, Friday, was 78.35. So 7860's game. That's that's how this thing is shaking out. And uh, we'll see if they decide to start selling uh, some other equities. So once they start selling Facebook, I think that really started, um, you know, Facebook out here. Now picture this too. That was just the release of what they're going to say tomorrow. Facebook has just went from uh, 190 to 183 today. This was a sell down today. And someone really sold some shares down at uh, 1240 this afternoon. That was a, that was a big 779,000. Let me just see if I can find the, the bulk sales in this. Whoops. Yeah, there you go. So there's some selling out here, man. Um, in Facebook's case, if you happen to watch the Tiger TV, you wouldn't take the first one because that's the open, 113,000. But other than that, you can see at that 1130, 1150 mark, 30,000, 22,000, 23,000. Those are some good numbers uh, on the way down. The, uh, okay, so let's take a look at the metals and the miners here, right? So metals, bottom line, GCZ9. Okay, so we pull up the gold contract. Gold contract today has rejected lower price, has lighter volume. We got to 1484, we're at 1491. You get anemic volume here. You get 197,000 contracts, which you like to see the 197 is going into 486. So that's saying it wants higher price. GDX, we'll just use the GDX for the aspect of some of the equities out here. GDX also rejected lower price out here today. Anemic volume, 22, 20, 2 million shares traded, you're going into 82, you hit 2623, trying to get it to 2618, that's also saying that wants higher price, you know, so they're, they're set up nice, man. The thing that is intriguing to me is that you had, you had the dollar coming lower, you know, last about week and a half, right? What we didn't get when that dollar was going lower is that you didn't get that explosion to the top side in the metals market. I actually like that. The reason I like it, folks, is that that's how deviant the market actually is. So as long as you keep checking the aspect of how the metals are trading versus how the equities are trading, they're both in harmony with each other. If we put that together with the note and bond market, which is very important because interest rates keep going lower, metals will keep going higher. And in both the 10 and the 30, we haven't seen this in a long period of time, that you had the anemic volume inside those debt markets. As you're going into strength, it rejected it. That's telling me that notes and bonds wants to go, wants to go not only just higher, but dramatically higher. This is the second day in a row that we actually did this. You know, so the way that's set up is, you know, and then if we take the dollar, we know that we got a little bounce out here today. But what we also know right now is this, that the, the pound as well as the euro likes what's happening over in the UK. They both have come off the lows. They got some strength coming off the lows. That's telling me that this deal is done. They're fed up with it over there. Whole ball of wax. The timetable's going to be in place. This thing's going to get done. The pound's going to run higher. The euro's going to run higher. That's going to bring the dollar lower. That's going to bring metals higher. 
and notes and bonds, bottom line, you can see it's this very subtle selling as we're getting into this close. And this sell is out here, man. And, you know, as a couple of our tigresses were saying this morning, they felt like the trap door was going to open. Well, the trap door is not open, but let me tell you something. It's, it's very close to opening. Dow, Dow's down six, Nasdaq's off 52, S&P's are off eight and a half. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow's down 15, Nasdaq's off 56, S&Ps are off 9.5. What you're going to have out here today, folks, is this. All the major indices, uh, bottom line, to get over the highs of the last few days, have lighter volume. Gave it up on price, have light of volume. That's a failure on price, a failure on volume. The cool thing here, too, that's very hard to do, you know. What ends up happening is that the as markets keep pushing higher and higher and higher, particularly where we've been here, the volume has been anemic, okay? Uh, but guess what? That's, that's how this thing is shaking out. It's showing that you don't have any buyers uh, at higher price. Uh, basically, they're worn out. And, uh, you know, we uh, the S&P out here today, you know, we got over the... The highs out here, 46 million. We'll probably do 46 million. We did have 42 so far. Got over the highs of uh, last uh, Thursday, which was 324. We get the 390, and it's going to give it up. Well, it's already has given it up. The NDX 100, uh, outside of the, the small caps, the smaller, weakest indice. But the NDX uh, is the thing that has moved, has continued to move these markets. You know, uh, 
NDX today, uh, the Qs got up to a price point of 192.42. That high was trying to get to is 194.50. And 17 million shares versus 19. We'll see whether it can do the 17 million. What has happened as we've come into this close, they're all in confirmed ABC structures on the way down. Now, what's really cool about this is that they may not finish those off tonight, but when you get a confirmed ABC structure down on an intraday chart going into tomorrow morning, your probability is much higher that you know you can gauge where this baby's going to be trading tonight. So if I look at the Qs, you're going to see the A point is 193.10. Your B is 192.08, so you get about a point which is going to get you to 191.52, and right now you're at 191.99. You know, you go inside the futures, if you trade the futures, it's a, always a nice deal. I love when these do them coming into the close, folks. Um, bottom line, because why? Because what happens with the futures market, of course, you get an additional 15 minutes after the 4 o'clock close that these babies are going to be trading. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about, whatever you focus on grows, whatever you want in life, folks. Visualize it, step into it, take ownership, let it fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Look forward to speaking. I'm right back here tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Go get them, folks.